Hello, I'd like to give you a brief update on the Australia Indonesia Centre. It was established in October 2013 by the Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott after his talks with the then Indonesian President Susilo Bamba Yudhoyono. We have three big objectives. One is to increase the amount of collaborative research between Australia and Indonesia. The second one is to improve the depth and quality of relationships across government, business, academia and civil society. And the third one is to have an effect on attitudes and perceptions. Can Australians have a much more positive understanding of contemporary Indonesia and vice versa? I'd like to take you through some of the highlights of 2014 at the Centre. First, on research, we brought researchers in four big areas, infrastructure, health and medicine, energy and food and agriculture together in what we called bilateral, bilateral research summits. Uh, in this year, both were held in Jakarta, the first attracting about 130 researchers, the second about 80. What we achieved, of course, was many of the researchers were meeting themselves and each other for the first time, and as they met, as they debated ideas, they've now started to develop ways to work together. The AIC is funding some of their research in those four big areas. But we're also interested in what we call cross-cutting <coughs> themes, such as governance, public policy, etc. In research, we're now well underway in forming new relationships that we think over time will matter, funded by the AIC, effectively funded by the Australian Government. One major piece of news this year for us was that the Indonesian Government, through the Ministry of Education and Culture, has begun co-funding our programs. They've given support to our small projects programs and also to what we call our rapid start projects. Very good news, very pleasing, and it's been so wonderful to see so many smiling faces of researchers at both our workshops and our summits. If I now, if I now turn to relationships, the Australia Indonesia Centre is one of many organisations that operate in the bilateral space. We set out to complement DFAT, Austray, the Australia Indonesia Institute, the Australia Indonesia Youth Association, and many more. So we don't set to duplicate, we, we add value to existing programs, and more particularly where we see a gap, we, we step in, analyse it, and we do things that we hope matter. Several big things happened this year. Uh, one was we were able to bring together the Jakarta Fashion Week and, and Melbourne's International Fashion Festival together in a collaboration that will see young designers from both nations celebrated in the other country's major fashion festival. We also held the inaugural Australia Indonesia Women's Leadership Lunch in Jakarta, something that we think is going to kick on. It was, it was 80 leading women attending at reasonably short notice. Next year, we expect it to be bigger and better, and our thinking is in and around Kartini Day in April. We have begun discussions with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Indonesia to bring 30 of their top future diplomats, the next generation, to Australia, and most particularly to Australian universities in our network, Monash University, the University of Melbourne, the University of Sydney, and the Australian National University, alongside the CSIRO, to give them high-end leadership training, personal leadership, organisational leadership, and on issues such as um, Indonesia's and Australia's place in a changing world and the geopolitical realities of the region. We're very excited about that. It'll happen early in 2015. Much more was done in the relationship space, very much linked to research, where we're bringing together researchers with government, researchers with business, and our end game is to bring them all together so that innovation in the true sense of academia, government, and business can occur. On our third, third key objective, changing attitudes, one thing that we've come across and we're quite pleased with is as we bring people together, as we, as we form networks of high influence, uh, attitudes actually, by the very nature of the building of the relationships, begin to change. We share stories, we share information, and we've complemented that by two initiatives. One is we've set up our Phase 1 website where we promote the Centre's activities. We also aggregate Australia-Indonesia stories from other institutions, from universities, from government, um, to more positively frame what we see as some tremendous work being done between the two countries. Our website gets bigger and better next year with new digital kits. 
Uh, we've also in, uh, started two research programs uh, that will be done between Australian and Indonesian researchers. One is a qualitative research project that will look at how young people view the other nation through their experiences of education, uh, business, personal experience or tourism, uh, etc. This we think will be a very uh, groundbreaking new way to look at the attitudes and perceptions issues and we'll complement that by some research we're doing to better establish the current knowledge base of all of the work that's previously done, what can we learn from it, what are the gaps, how do we respond to it and ultimately how do we put in place interventions that frame this relationship in a more positive light. 2014 for the Australian Indonesia Centre has been quite a dynamic year. It's our start-up year and in, in many respects it was really only nine months old by the time we recruited staff, secured our funding and set up our governance model. I must say the year has also been really quite defined by the quality of our board. We have leading uh, government, business and academic leaders from both nations who are really now helping guide the centre, giving advice, championing our causes and we very much look forward to the year ahead. By any measure 2015 promises to be an outstanding year for Indonesia. There's a new president. He's a populist president. He comes with a reform agenda. And even in these early days, at the close of 2014, I think Indonesia and the world is buzzing about the great potential of his country. We're seeing early changes, a focus on, for example, the maritime sea lanes, a focus on infrastructure, an immediate change on the fuel subsidy. And it's in this context that the year of 2015 for Australia and Indonesia should also be exciting. In Australia, the Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has already made clear attempts to begin to reset the relationship with the new president. And as a consequence, the Australia Indonesia Centre will work alongside both governments, businesses in both countries, and of course the leading research centres in both countries five in, in Australia, seven in Indonesia, but it's not a closed door policy. We will be inviting other universities, other researchers in as our programs start expanding. In 2015, most excitingly, we will get the first preliminary business plans back from researchers in our four big cluster areas. In these areas, we've had researchers from both nations working on what are the big opportunities for research. How could that research redefine the two countries in the areas of infrastructure, in the areas of energy, food and agriculture, and health and medicine? These preliminary reports will come out in the first half of 2015, and we will be bringing them to business and government to get their reactions, to refine them, and to then decide how will we invest at a higher rate in the second half of 2015 and beyond. Very, very exciting. 2015, after our year of setting up and planning, also looks to be exciting in relationships. The AIC, working with partners that include government organisations and agencies and business partners, we're setting out to basically reset some of the bigger items on the bilateral agenda. One of the first things we'll, we'll be looking to do is have a Kartini Day in Indonesia of very, very special significance. We are looking to bring together women, leading women in both nations, to really celebrate the whole notion of Kartini Day and to do it bilaterally, to share ideas, to share ideas of what it means to be a contemporary woman in a contemporary world and, and how can that be brought to have great effect between the two countries. Second, we are intent on bringing together up to 30 leaders from both nations, 30 leaders from Indonesia, 30 leaders from Australia, at a high level in business and government and academia to discuss, almost certainly behind closed doors, some of the most pressing issues between the two countries. Loosely called the Australia-Indonesia Leadership Dialogue, this forum, we hope, will, will cement relations to a greater extent. Our work on attitudes will also start to bear fruit as researchers come back with their findings in both qualitative research and quantitative research and that will lead us increasingly to look for interventions in market. In 2015, to give you an idea of another initiative that is winning support, we are working with a major organisation in Melbourne, in the music area, looking to, to, to 
build the preparations towards a performance of an orchestra in Indonesia, an Australian orchestra, in 2016. During 2015, we'll be engaging the leading Indonesians and we'll be doing site visits both ways and probably performances in both countries. Extremely exciting. One thing that's emerged as we've thought with our partners, the universities, the businesses and the governments, one thing that's emerged is we do need to understand in greater detail what are the joint competitive advantages of Australia and Indonesia when we think about perhaps exports for third markets or for competitive advantages for both nations in the future. The AIC will set out in 2015 to work particularly with business partners to, to study and research the potential competitive advantages and report back to the Australian and Indonesian communities. The whole notion of this is to actually do what we say we're going to do, which is can Australia and Indonesia work far more effectively together in ways that produce mutual benefits and over time prosperity. The centre is still young. In our second year, 2015, once again, we'll be relying on the friendship and the support of the government agencies in both nations, of the, the universities here in Australia and in, in Indonesia. But I wanted to also raise one other thing. From the early days of the centre, some Australian and Indonesian organisations have recognised what we're doing early, and I would like to say thank you. To Vizi and the Pratt Foundation, thank you very much for be, becoming the number one foundation partner for the AIC. It is deeply appreciated. Price Waterhouse Coopers, we appreciate your efforts enormously, a foundation partner in 2014 and moving into 2015. We were delighted to get support from other organisations. The Commonwealth Bank, Garuda, PT Sabant out of Indonesia. These companies and their early support for us mean a lot and we're confident of attracting additional commercial support as we move into 2015 and beyond. The Australia Indonesia Centre will stay very much rooted in its three core objectives. Our vision is that young Indonesians and young Australians over time will know each other much in a much better way. They'll be friends and some of the barriers to those friendships will start to dissolve. This will occur, we hope, because collaborative research between the two countries has reached a higher level with business and government engagement and the nature of the relationships that have been formed are as significant as the relationships between Australia and other nations. And it's not a bad way to frame it. Can Australia and Indonesia be as friendly as Australia and America, as friendly as Australia and Britain? And can the AIC play its role in working with others, in collaborat collaborating and in cooperating to, to bring this change about in our lifetime, hopefully beginning in the next few years? Thank you. I wish you well for a safe, happy and, and relaxing Christmas and New Year and a holiday season for all in both nations. Thank you.